Sup, Chooms, how y'all living? Hope everything is Nova and you're all having a preem week. So, recently I uploaded a video that examined the evidence for using 2.5 milligrams of dutasteride as the strongest possible hair loss treatment that is available today. I'll go ahead and link that video below, and if you haven't watched it, then please make sure that you do, as this video is a follow-up to that video. But let me state unequivocally that 2.5 milligrams of dutasteride is literally the strongest hair loss treatment in existence that can be taken safely. Safely. The evidence I uncovered showed that finasteride suppresses scalp DHT by about 40% and dutasteride at 0.5 mg per day suppresses it by about 50%. However, 2.5 mg of dutasteride per day suppresses scalp DHT by a whopping 79%. That is why I have divided these treatments into three different categories. First of all, you have the finasteride peasants such as myself. Then you have the dutasteride master race for dutasteride users taking the standard dose of dutasteride at 0.5 milligrams per day. But amongst the dutasteride master race, there is an even more elite category, those taking 2.5 milligrams per day. These legendary hair loss witchers are members of the dutasteride exalted race. But when I went over the research on studies justifying using using higher doses of dutasteride to combat the slaphead curse, I kept having a nagging thought. What if there was another category that I was missing? Was it possible that between the finasteride peasantry and the dutasteride nobility, there could be another class? Was there a dutasteride middle class hiding within the research data? The reason I kept thinking about this was because in the research studies, there was a specific dutasteride dose that kept coming up, but which everyone just seems to ignore for some reason. That dose is a dose of 0.1 milligrams of dutasteride per day. Now, I am sure someone is writing in the comments section right now, but Kevin, dutasteride Dutasteride doesn't even come in a 0.1 milligram dose, it's a 0.5 milligram capsule, so you can't cut it up like you can with finasteride, so there's no practical way to take 0.1 milligrams of dutasteride a day, bro. Well, actually, that is a valid point, which we will get to soon enough, but for now, let's just ignore that problem. I promise I'll address it before the end of the video. The reason I bring up the dose of 0.1 milligrams a day of dutasteride, though, is because in the dose-ranging studies of dutasteride, the dose of 0 0.1 milligrams a day really looks like it is comparable in its effects to finasteride at a dose of either 1 milligram or 5 milligrams per day. For example, in the study that I quoted in my 2.5 milligram dutasteride dose video, the amount of serum DHT suppression with 0.1 milligram a day of dutasteride was almost exactly the same as the amount of DHT suppression with 5 milligrams of finasteride. In this graph, finasteride is represented by the open circles and dutasteride at 0.5 milligrams per day is represented by the closed triangles. The actual percentage decrease in serum DHT was 69.8% with 0.1 milligrams per day of dutasteride and 73% with 5 milligrams per day of finasteride. Scalp DHT suppression was a little less with dutasteride at 0.1 milligrams per day versus finasteride. It was 32% with dutasteride at 0.1 milligrams per day and 41% with finasteride at 5 milligrams per day. However, when looking at hair growth judged by hair counts, dutasteride at 0.1 milligrams per day, if anything, looked even more effective than finasteride at 5 milligrams per day in that study. The same is true when investigators rated improvements in various parts of the scalp looking at before and after photos. Dutasteride at 0.1 milligram per day is at least as good as 5 milligrams per day of finasteride, if not even better. That is why I would classify 0.1 milligrams of dutasteride as being a happy medium between the finasteride peasants and the dutasteride master race. You could see almost the exact same results in this other study right here that also compared different dutasteride doses to finasteride. This time, the finasteride dose was the standard dose for treating hair loss, which is 1 milligrams per day as opposed to 5 milligrams per day that was used in the previous study. However, with 1 milligram per day of finasteride, it still looks like 0.1 milligrams of dutasteride a day is at least as good as finasteride in terms of hair growth. Looking at hair counts, hair diameter, and global photographic assessments, 0.1 milligrams per day of dutasteride was comparable or even better than finasteride at 1 milligram per day. So you may be thinking, who cares? If dutasteride at 0.1 milligrams per day is as good as finasteride at 1 milligram per day, and if neither are as good as dutasteride at 0.5 milligrams per day or at 2.5 milligrams per day, why would anyone switch from being a finasteride peasant to just being a member of the dutasteride middle class? Well, that was my 
my initial impression too, but when I looked at how similar the safety profiles of dutasteride and finasteride actually are when they're taken at the standard dosages, it got me thinking that maybe, just maybe, dutasteride at 0.1 mg per day would have a lower risk of side effects than finasteride at 1 mg per day. Now, the actual studies comparing the different doses of dutasteride have found no evidence of a relationship between the dose of dutasteride and the incidence of sexual side effects. That theoretically means that the incidence of side effects won't get higher if the dutasteride dose increases, and the incidence wouldn't get lower at a lower dose either. This data is from the study we just looked at, and it included 917 men, so this is a pretty large study. However, to assess the true risk of side effects, it's best to look at as much data as we possibly can. So, one way to do this is with a meta-analysis like this meta-analysis right here. This meta-analysis of 576 subjects treated with either dutasteride or finasteride for antritic alopecia showed no statistical difference between dutasteride at 0.5 mg per day and finasteride at 1 mg per day in the incidence of altered libido, erectile dysfunction, and ejaculation disorders. Here is an even larger meta-analysis of 2,041 subjects with benign prostatic hypertrophy who were treated with either dutasteride at 0.5 mg per day or finasteride at 5 mg per day. It came to the same conclusion, specifically that there was no difference in the risk of side effects between dutasteride and finasteride. But if you look at the graphs of the risk of side effects, it actually looks like there is a trend for a lower risk of side effects with dutasteride versus finasteride. In fact, that was the conclusion of this study from Good Korea. The study was a multi-center study of 600 subjects on either dutasteride at 0.5 mg per day or finasteride at 1 mg per day for hair loss. It actually concluded that the risk of side effects was slightly lower in people taking 0.5 mg per day of dutasteride than in those taking 1 mg per day of finasteride. So, it appears possible or even probable that dutasteride has a lower incidence of side effects than finasteride. At worst, the incidence of side effects is comparable between the two drugs. But when we're talking about dutasteride here, we are talking about the standard dose of 0.5 mg per day. It's certainly possible that lowering the dose of dutasteride from 0.5 mg per day to 0.1 mg per day might actually lower the risk of side effects even more. And since 0.1 mg of dutasteride is about as effective as 1 mg of finasteride, this would present an excellent option for hair loss sufferers who get side effects on the standard dose of finasteride or dutasteride since they can switch to a treatment that is just as effective as finasteride but with a lower risk of side effects. We know it is just as effective because of the data we just went over that showed you could achieve a similar benefit in hair regrowth from taking 0.1 mg of dutasteride per day as you could get from 1 mg per day of finasteride. With this low dose of dutasteride, at worst, the side effects would be comparable to those of finasteride, but maybe there would be an even lower risk of side effects with 0.1 mg of dutasteride per day. But I'm sure someone is still asking right now, but Kevin, how could someone even join the dutasteride middle class? You can't divide up a 0.5 mg capsule of dutasteride like you can with finasteride tablets. Okay, Chums, I promise I'd come back to that. Now, it is true that most of the time, dutasteride comes in a capsule containing a liquid. I've heard of some countries where you can possibly get dutasteride as a tablet, but I don't think that's very common. However, dutasteride has some unique pharmacologic properties that make it ideal for giving doses intermittently. I'm going to add a reference in the description below to this article here. However, don't be too intimidated by it, even though it does contain a lot of complex math. In this study, healthy volunteers were given various single doses of oral dutasteride as well as finasteride. At the time of the study, dutasteride was often still referred to by its original name, which was G1198745. Anyways, the subjects had their blood drawn every few hours for the first day after getting each drug and then periodically after that for 28 days. The investigators repeatedly measured DHT levels and drug levels. The math in the study was done to develop models as to how the drugs affected DHT levels and how they were metabolized, but that's not too important for our purposes here. What is important, though, is that this study answers a lot of questions you chooms might have about the time course of how both dutasteride and finasteride work, and the study is relevant to the question on how to get the equivalent of a 0.1 milligram per day dose of dutasteride by using a 0.5 milligram capsule. So, let's take a look at what happens when you take a single dose of finasteride or dutasteride for the first time. First, let's look at a single dose of 5 milligrams of finasteride. Here's a graph of the finasteride blood levels in the different sub subjects over 24 hours. You can see that the blood level peaks within a couple of hours, but by 24 hours, the blood levels have fallen by a lot. From this data, it's possible to figure out the half-life of the drug, which means the amount of time for 
50% of the drug to be gone from the blood. In this study, the investigators calculated the half-life as 10 hours, which is a little longer than some of the other studies of finasteride, which gives the half-life as about 5 to 7 hours. But either way, if you stop finasteride, you should expect most of the drug to be out of your system within 24 to 48 hours. With dutasteride, on the other hand, the half-life is much, much longer than that of finasteride. Dutasteride actually has two different half-lives. At a low drug concentration, the half-life is relatively short, only three days. But at higher concentrations, and when it's used chronically, the half-life extends out to five weeks, which is a very long time to have a half-life of a drug. It takes five half-lives for a drug to be virtually gone from the body. Therefore, people taking dutasteride chronically may have to wait about six months for the drug to clear out. So, if you do get side effects from dutasteride, they may take longer to go away than with finasteride, which is one disadvantage the master race has over the peasants. But what happens to DHT levels after a single dose of finasteride or dutasteride is administered? Well, both drugs bind to the 5-air enzyme very rapidly. These graphs here show the drop in DHT levels that occurs with finasteride and with doses of dutasteride, which remember is called G1198745 in this study. The doses of dutasteride range from 0.1 milligrams to 40 milligrams. The higher the dose, the bigger the drop in DHT, but the important thing to look at in this graph is the upper right-hand corner. You can see that the peak effect on suppressing DHT occurs within a day. So both of these drugs bind very quickly to the 5 air enzyme and they start working as soon as you take them. Then, if you look at how long it takes for the effects on DHT to wear off, you see that after a single dose of finasteride at 5 milligrams, DHT comes back to normal within 1 to 2 weeks. However, it takes much longer for DHT to come back to normal after a single dose of dutasteride. But it may seem strange that it takes up to 2 weeks for DHT levels to come back to normal after just a single dose of finasteride, since like we already said, the drug has a short half-life and it should be out of the system within a couple of days. So, the reason for that discrepancy is that both finasteride and dutasteride bind to and inhibit the 5 air enzyme irreversibly. Now, I'm sure a finasteride hater is going to hear me say that and say, uh-huh, that's proof that finasteride and dutasteride permanently destroy my 5 air enzymes, and that explains why people get post-finasteride syndrome. These drugs kill DHT forever, so you just proved that post-finasteride syndrome exists, Kevin, so ha-ha. Well, no. <laughs> That's not what it means at all. The turnover rate of the 5 air enzymes in the body is very fast. The half-life of the turnover is 80 hours, which means that you will replace essentially all of your 5 air enzymes in 1-2 to two weeks after stopping finasteride. So yes, 5 air inhibitors will outright kill the 5 air enzyme, but the enzyme does get quickly replaced, which is actually kind of unfortunate if you think about it, because it would be pretty nice just to take the drug once and then kill off the 5 air enzymes permanently. It would be a hair loss cure at that point, essentially. So anyways, the duration of the effect of finasteride is determined not by its half-life, but by the turnover rate of the 5 air enzymes. With dutasteride, on the other hand, the half-life of the drug is much longer than the turnover rate of the 5 air enzymes, so its duration of action after stopping it is determined mostly by its long half-life. Anyways, the long duration of the effect of finasteride allows it to be taken even every other day without losing its effect, but the much longer duration of the effect of dutasteride means that it can be taken once per week or even once a month without losing much of its effect. These graphs here show the predicted effects on serum DHT levels of finasteride at 5 mg per day, dutasteride at 0.25 mg per day, dutasteride at 2.5 mg per week, and dutasteride at 10 mg per month. So the point of all this pharmacology data is that you don't need to take 0.1 milligrams of dutasteride per day in order to achieve the benefit of that dose. You can achieve the same effect by just taking a 0.5 milligram capsule of dutasteride once every five days. Practically speaking, you could probably come close to this even just by taking a 0.5 milligram capsule once per week. I know people have tried this and have reported success. So that's how you can go from being a finasteride peasant to becoming a member of the dutasteride middle class. You don't have to find some obscure tablet form of dutasteride to quarter like you would a Proscar tablet. You could just intermittently take a standard 0.5 milligram dose of dutasteride. So if you're one of the rare people who get side effects from 1 milligram of finasteride or 0.5 milligrams of dutasteride, then perhaps a good option for you would be to take 0.5 milligrams of dutasteride once or twice per week. You'll be using a treatment that is already at least as effective as finasteride at 1 milligram per day, but with a potentially lower risk of side effects. That seems like a 
like a pretty good deal to me. Now, obviously, being that finasteride is an FDA-approved drug for hair loss, we don't have nearly as much data on using just 0.5 milligrams of dutasteride once per week compared to using finasteride daily. However, I do know that some people who have combined dutasteride at 0.5 milligrams once or twice per week with daily finasteride use have gotten very good results. And there is some data in the medical literature to support this approach. For example, here is a case report of a 47-year-old man who had been on finasteride at 1 milligram per day, but who started to lose ground after 4 years of treatment. A dose of 0.5 milligrams per week of dutasteride was added and his finasteride use was continued. He had an excellent response by just adding 0.5 milligrams of dutasteride per week to his treatment as seen in these photographs. Panel A is before treatment and panel B is after 6 months of just finasteride. At first he had a reasonably good response to just finasteride, however panel C shows that his hair started thinning out more after 4 years of treatment with finasteride, but 3 months after adding once per week dutasteride at 0.5 milligrams, he had a pretty dramatic response as you can see in this panel D right here. So if you are on finasteride and are confident you are losing ground, then a good option would just be to dip your toes into a little bit more extra DHT inhibition by adding once or twice per week dutasteride. That way you could join the dutasteride middle class and experience some extra benefits without having to make the full commitment to joining the dutasteride master race. So to summarize all of this, low doses of dutasteride averaging at 0.1 milligrams per day seem to be just as effective as finasteride at 1 milligram per day and it's possible that this low dose might have fewer side effects than finasteride. That's the dutasteride middle class dose. The standard dose of dutasteride at 0.5 milligrams per day, which is the dutasteride master race dose, has been shown in numerous studies to be more effective than finasteride while at the same time having the same risk or possibly even a lower risk of side effects than finasteride. And finally, we have dutasteride at 2.5 milligrams per day, which is the legendary dose for the dutasteride exalted race. This is the most effective treatment for hair loss in existence. Although admittedly, the evidence is more limited for this dose, it does appear that the side effect profile is the same as lower doses of dutasteride, which makes 2.5 milligrams of dutasteride per day an absolutely fantastic option for those who have extremely aggressive hair loss, such as people who have diffuse patterns or retrograde alopecia, especially if they started balding while they were young. So go ahead and make your choice, Chooms, and choose wisely, for the right hair loss treatment will grant you hair, but the wrong one will take it from you. You chose poorly. Thank you for watching, Hair Loss Witchers. I'll see you all next time. God bless.